Welcome to Manila Med Healthline, only our best to make you feel better. I am Hannah Lapidan, your host for today's episode. Today we are joined by one of Manila Med's senior active consultants, an internal medicine gastroenterology fellow of Philippine College of Physicians, Philippine Society of Gastroenterology, Philippine Society of Digestive Endoscopy, and member of the Hepatology Society of the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, join us, our fellow viewers, over Facebook as we welcome Dr. Hildegard Yasai Vistal. Good afternoon, Dr. Avesta. So today, Paul, we will be discussing about hepatitis A. Yeah. And this topic is also close to my heart because when I was in high school, Paul, uh -huh. I also had hepatitis A. So yes. this is a, a perfect avenue for the viewers out there, sa ating Facebook viewers, yeah. para magkaroon po sila ng idea kung ano po yung hepatitis A. Yes. And to start with, I have some questions po of my yes. own. Ano nga po ba ang hepatitis A? Well, this is one of the causes of viral hepatitis, mm -mm. which is usually caused by an RNA virus. Mm -hmm. It is a kind of hepatitis that's supposed to be the mildest, mm -mm. and it's a self-limiting disease entity, unlike the other types of hepatitis, mm -mm. which can go into a chronic affair. No? Hepatitis A is usually a kind of hepatitis that is usually yeah, transmitted through the fecal-oral road. Oh, Ibig sabihin niyan, nahawaan ka or nakakain ka ng something that is infected with hepatitis A. So, one of them is the possibility that you ate something na it was, uh, if you got it from a person who was infected, infected with hepatitis A. Mm -mm. Or there are times, there are types of, shell, it's shellfish, no? Mm -mm. Like uh, oysters, scallops, which are usually in areas where there's a waterborne endemic for hepatitis A. So, so when you got that when you get that thing that is infected with hepatitis A, you ate it mm -mm. or there's something that you got from the feces and you put it into your mouth, mm -mm. you will develop hepatitis A. So, and usually the incubation period of this is two weeks to a month. Mm -mm. And symptoms would vary from fever, mm -mm. body malaise, mm -mm. and later on yung paninilaw na sinasabi yung Jaundice. Mm -mm. Then the liver will be some some form of uh, uh, pain in the right upper quadrant area where the liver is located, mm -mm. and the liver is also enlarged. And then you will feel a lot of body malaise. You mm -mm. cannot eat. Mm -hmm. So this is a kind of hepatitis A that is self-limiting. Self-limiting. Mm -hmm. Ibig mawawala rin niya sa system mo, na hindi ka nagiging cirrhosis or nagkaharong ka na cancer of the liver. Unlike the other types of hepatitis. So, kumbaga, I think simplest form yes, of hepatitis yes. A. But of course, there are also risks that can go, mm -hmm. like a fulminant hepatitis. The very rare naman na nagpa-fulminant hepatitis, mm -hmm. very small ang percentage. Kung fulminant hepatitis are very toxic, there is a lot, lot of massive necrosis mm -hmm. in the liver. Pero may mga gabot na dyan, so hindi na rin nakakatakot. But as much as possible, we should not also be taking or be, be having a hepatitis A infection in our system, mm -hmm. in our body. Ayan. So, in cases handled po by Manila Med, what are the most usual triggers of uh, hepatitis A so, here at the hospital? Since na I told you that one of the the cause of this is fecal oral transmission, mm -mm. so nakakawaan ka pa rin o nakakakain ka pa rin ng something that is infected with hepatitis A. So, pwedeng nahawaan ka to somebody na nakakain ka sa plato na may hepatitis A mm. o nakakain ka ng a shellfish na may hepatitis A din to. Because shellfish are especially the scallops. These are filter feeders. Ibig sabihin na filter feeders, they filter the water mm -hmm. to, to get the food. Yes. E kung mayroong hepatitis A yun, magkakaroon ng magigikar yung hepatitis A yung scallops mm -hmm. or yung oysters. Then once you eat it, magkakaroon ka na hepatitis A kung wala kang immunization to hepatitis mm. A. You've mentioned, Doctor, na yung mga foods like uh, seashells and scallops. What other food po? Uh, gives, uh, that gives higher risk of hepatitis A? Actually, ang, uh, the foods that give hepatitis A are those that are poorly handled. Mm. Ibig sabihin madumi. Yes. So, wala man special, specific foods mm. na kakapagbigay except for those, except for the shellfish which mm -mm. nandun sila sometimes when they are raised in waters that are infected with hepatitis A. Except 
yung pagkain na it was handled mm -hmm. by somebody who is hepatitis, who has a hepatitis A. Mm -hmm. Kapag madumi yan, at may hepatitis A, yung nag-handle yung mga preparations of food, mm -hmm. ay may hepatitis A, nalagyan niya ng virus yun. Once you eat it, ma pwede kang mahawa. Infected ka nyan. Kasi we yes. have this notion, di ba? Like, for example, the specific uh, school, they call it hepalane. Mm -hmm. We have this notion na once you eat kwek-kwek or kumain ka ng, ng any street foods, you'll get hepa. Ganon. Hindi. You, hindi. It doesn't mean na kung kumakain ka ng mga ganon. Mayroon lahat sila hepatitis. Mm -hmm. so, it's just the way it was handled. Okay. And it was cooked. Mm -hmm. Kung yun ay cooked or handled by somebody who has hepatitis A, Ganun, no, isang baka mahawahan na pa It's not because na nandyan sila. Pero sa mga street foods ay mm -mm. there. We don't know how <laughs> clean they are. Pwedeng madumi rin sila. Yes. Pwedeng the way it was, those foods are handled are not also good. Mm, Kasi fecal oral route nga ang transmission eh. So it's something that is madumi, that kakainin mo, mm -mm. so magda-develop ka ngayon dyan. Mm. And what are the demographics of people po? Diba? Since you've mentioned na hygienic dapat, so uh, what can people do to avoid getting hepatitis A? Uh, uh, in the first place, we should be clean always. Yes, po. No? Kasi this hepatitis A is usually common to poorly mm -mm. unsanitized yes. or unsanitized places. So, siyempre, dapat malinis, malinis ka talagang. Malinis katawan. And the way to avoid that, of course, immunization pa rin. And so that you will develop the proper antibody to hepatitis A, so it will not get the disease. Ang pinakamaganda pa rin is proper handling. Mm -mm -mm. Malinis, maghugas ka ng kamay, tapos hindi ka basta kakain siguro sa plato ng, mga plato iba. ng iba, iinom na, inom na hindi mo alam mm -mm. kung how clean that, uh, that water na iinumin mo or the how clean that plato na kakainan mo. Yes, no? Pero yun ang tab to prevent it. Pero mm -hmm. if you really want na hindi ka magkakaroon, immunization pa rin ang pinaka first program na dapat you be, get in don't don't, you, don't before getting the disease entity mm -mm. you should have something to defend yourself so that's mm, the development of antibody which is socially taken through immunization Gano po ka, how frequent should the one person take the immunization shot actually ang hepatitis a two doses two doses mm -mm. protectohan na like the first dose will be now the second dose will be after a month mm. then from there you'll be developing the antibody already that is to, to fight back the hepatitis A virus. Okay, so um, you've mentioned that we have a lot of hepatitis viruses, Papo, aside from hepatitis A. Mm -hmm. How soon po ba does the person uh, develop hepatitis B or something? Or depende po yan sa pag, uh, urge, sense of urgency? Ang hepatitis B naman, uh, B, C, D, usually this is transmitted through the parenteral. Mm -mm. So I wrote yan to the vein. Pre, yung sinasabi rin na sexual, sexual mm -hmm. contact. If you are e antigen positive, mataas din ang virus mo sa mga secretion sa katawan. Mm -hmm. So, secre secretion sa sexual intercourse, mm -hmm. kissing or sometimes, mm -hmm. or perinatal. Yung perinatal, ibig sabihin, the mother is infected with hepatitis B virus, mm -hmm. then during delivery, sometimes there's something in there na pwede na, na Nakaka, nakalunok yung bata ng blood na nanay niya mm -mm. and then eventually these children who are positive who are, we have positive surface or hepatitis B mothers mm -mm. would develop hepatitis B infection so ang aming fight to that now is have that baby mm -mm. immunized immediately 24 hours after delivery both the immunoglobulin and the, uh, the passive type of immunization ah, to develop nice. that child from developing hepatitis B. Because this hepatitis B is a kind of a disease entity that can lead into chronic liver disease. Mm -hmm. Though, hindi lahat. A small percentage. So, nagiging cirrhosis ang atay. Mm -hmm. Then, after that, also a small percentage nagiging cancer of the liver. Oh. So, that is the way to prevent it. So, ngayon, lahat na babies supposed to be or even adolescent mm -mm. na hindi pa sila nababakunahan, mm -mm. we advise vaccination to prevent getting the disease itself. Mm. It is better preventive rather than therapeutic. Yes, that's right. So you prevent the disease to go into an individual, mm -mm. magbakuna kayo. So that's what the, our society had been um, propagating mm -mm. or advertising to all. So like us individual practitioners, mm -mm. we always like in many ma medical center Manila, that is one of the projects that we have we always let our patients aware of the importance mm -hmm. of vaccination. Ayun. So, importante talaga ang bakuna sa lahat. Mm -hmm. So, after this, Doctora, we'll be having a short break. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, 
Dr. Vistel here will be answering your comments and your inquiries on the comment section below. All of this will happen when Manila Med Helpline returns. We are healing professionals, trained by science, molded by experience. We are in the practice of proactive health care. We dedicate our lives to you. And in the process, we ourselves become better. Manila Med. Only our best to make you feel better. Welcome back to Manila Med Healthline. We're still here with Dr. Hildegard Yasai Vistal discussing about hepatitis. Ayan, we've mentioned a while ago that we're going to answer yung mga comments and yung mga inquiries on this uh, comment section. And now, we are ready to answer it. To start with, po, we have here selected questions. Ayan. Meron po nagtanong dito kanina, pag kumain po ba ng hilaw na pagkain, magkakaroon po ba ng hepatitis A? Yung mga kilawin, gano'n. Uh, hindi, na hindi naman lahat na hilaw na pagkain ay magkakahepatitis A. Mm -mm. Only when those preparing the that kilawin is infected with hepatitis A, that's the time na magkaroon mm -hmm. ka ng hepatitis A kung not properly handled. handled. So, hindi lahat na kilawin ay hindi na pwede. <laughs> kung talaga yung nag-handle ay mayroon siyang hepatitis mm -hmm. A virus sa kanyang kamay, not properly handled, madumi. Doon ka magkakaroon ng hepatitis A kung kakainin mm -hmm. yung kilawin na yun. So, it's not with it's the not food? It's not with the food. It's not, it's the, it's the proper handling pa rin. Mm -hmm. Kaya yung kung nag-handle nun, nag-prepare, mm -hmm. hepatitis A virus pala, na ilagay sa pagkain, kakainin mo, doon ka magkakahepatitis A. Mm -hmm. Ayan. Baka ayaw nilang kumain ng kilawin na <laughs> tanggigi because kilawin na hindi naman ganun. Ayan. So, hindi okay. yung totoo. The, yes. the notion is wrong. And then, yes. the next question po, effective po ba ang HEPA vaccine kahit matanda ka na nagpa-vaccine? Well, uh, usually, it will be a lot better kung magpa-vaccine ka, magpa ka na younger. Mm -mm. So, ang aming uh, limit is 40 years old. Pero, Ooh. mas effective ang vaccination na magkakadevelop ka kapag mas bata ka. Pero pwede ka pa rin magpabakuna, 40 and above, 40 and above. to be sure. No? Kasi malalaman mo pa rin kung no, makadevelop ka o hindi. Usually, in my practice, when I give vaccination to the elderly, mm -mm. I check them kung nakadevelop ba sila o hindi. Kasi there are some na nakakapagdevelop, pero mm -mm. majority hindi nakakapagdevelop. Pero at least you tried vaccinating mm -mm. them, rather than not taking it anytime. Yes. Rather than, di, try mo lang. At kung madandela, yes. di okay mm -hmm. na. Kung hindi, di, talagang ganun. Ingat ka na lang. Better late than never, yes. ika nga. Oh. And number three question from our uh, FB viewers, we have here, ang gamutan ba ng HEPA ay pwede sa bahay-bahay lang? Do it, uh, DIY kumbaga. Yes. You will accept when complications set in. Like, mm -mm. One of the things or symptoms na nangyayari sa hepatitis ay suka ka ng suka. Hindi yes. ka makakain. Mm -mm. Kaya hindi pwede sa bahay yon. <laughs> Nakasuwero ka dapat, nasa yeah. hospital ka. Or else, madedehydrate ka ng husto. Pero kung mm -mm. hindi naman ganun, nakakakain ka, we can, he, the patient can be treated at home with some medicines lang. Support mm -hmm. para lang hindi siya madehydrate. Pero kung suka ka ng suka, hindi ka na makakain, hindi na pwede hospitalized sa dapat yan. Pero majority of hepatitis cases ay sa bahay pa rin naman sinitrit. Ano po ba yung mga, home, mga home remedies, if ever po? Pag ay proper diet, nutrition, mm -hmm. tapos plenty of fluids, para at least hindi ka manghina ng husto. Kasi hindi ka ma with hepatitis, ay you have lost your appetite. Mm -hmm. Talaga hindi ka makakain kay force mo sila na kumain we para to hindi manghina. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Ayan. So, we have another question here. Sabi, early, mayroon po ba yung early signs ng HEPA? Ano po ba yung early signs ng mga, HEPA? Mga early signs of hepatitis, parang frankaso. Mm. Flu-like symptoms na sinasabi. Masama ang pakiramdam, linalagnat, mm -mm. tapos walang appetite, body malis, joint pains, body pains. Mm -mm. Then after some time, pwedeng Makikita mo na yung ihi mo, kulay tsaan na. Mm. T-colored, no? After a week or then a few days. Mm -mm. Depende ko how much virus ang nakuha mo. So, magiging makulay tsaan na ba? Something is wrong. Bakit kulay tsaan na ito? Then, after a few days, maninilaw ka na. Tapos, lalaki na yung atay mo. Mm -mm. Or early signs, parang tangkaso. Flu-like symptoms sa sinasabi. 
body malis, anorexia, hindi mm-hmm. mo nakain. Ibig sabihin nun, masakit ang mga kasukasuan, mga joint, mga body pains. Ano yung hindi makakain? Fever also. Those are the early signs. Early signs. Ayan. Mm-hmm. So, that's cleared out. And we also have here po, yung uh, uso po ba ang HEPA sa Pinas? Ay, oo. Especially, Hepatitis A is usually very common in third world countries. Mm. And we are one of them. Yes. It's because of our sanitation. Mm-hmm. So, yung uh, poor, poor sanitation, mm-hmm. hindi maganda kay uso ang uso dito sa atin yan. Especially, siguro mga areas na mandudumi. Mm-hmm. No? Ayan, we have also another question. Bakit po naninilaw ang balat pag may hepa? Yun na, sinasabi ko na after some time, yung ihi mo ay kulay tsa na. Mm-mm, yes po. At means na, meron ka ng bile na iniihi kasi malaki na yung atay mo. Oh. So, after that, maninilaw na ang mata. Mm-hmm. Then, after that, the bile deposits or pigments pupunta na sa skin. Yes. Kaya na, ninilaw ka talaga because the liver is enlarged, Mm-mm. mayroon kang information sa atay. So, paninilaw ang mata. O, yung sabi yung ihi muna, yung mata, and then, under, and tapos na, under the skin. Yan. We have po, anong, ah, uh, Hanggang kailan usually nagsusurvive ang tao pag hindi na-treat ang HEPA? <laughs> <laughs> Mahirap yata yan. Hanggang, Hanggang... Hindi, because of course, at tayo naman, we have also our own immunis, immunity. Mm-hmm. Na sometimes, if we have a good immunity, mm-hmm. hindi ka naman mamamatay talaga dyan. No? Mm-hmm. Yan ang sinasabi ko. Ang hepatitis A is a self-limiting disease. Mm-hmm. It can be cured in a certain number, like up to six weeks, up to two months. Hindi magiging chronic yan. Ah. Yung hepatitis B and C, ang, there's a percentage that would go mm-hmm. into chronicity. Ito yung nag-liver cirrhosis, nagka-cancer of the liver. Mm-hmm. Ito yung mga sasabihin mo na nakakatakot na komplikasyon. Mm-hmm. Kumbaga, uh-huh. hindi, walang taning sa hepatitis A if ever. Yes, unless you go into a complication na sinasabi mm-hmm. na fulminant hepatitis. Mm-hmm. Kaya fulminant hepatitis, napakataas ang mortality mm-hmm. rate. Ang mortality rate, ito yung death rate. Hindi mm-hmm. ka mamatay with that. But of course, with the advance of science na ngayon, hindi yes. ka mas na mamamatay niya. Yes. Maski thing. kung may hepatitis A ka, magpa-treat ka. Yes. Huwag kang you just treat yourself alone. Eh, mahirap talaga yan. Kung maging mag-pulminate hepatitis ka yan, ay Diyos ko, di wala na mangyari sa iyo. Mm-hmm. Kasi napakaganda pa namang gamutin na hepatitis A kasi hindi nagiging chronic. It's mm-hmm. a self-limiting disease. Kumbaga, as much as possible, mm-hmm. wag mag-self-diagnose. Yes. Yes. Uh, we have last two questions po. Pwede po bang mag-donate ng organs ang mga may hepa pag namatay? O oh, hindi. Hindi na pwede. Hindi. Hepat- ang hepatitis A, yes. Not ah. hepatitis B and C. Kasi hepatitis A, self-limiting naman yan eh. Hindi naman talaga na, nas dyan palagi sa'yo. It's the B and C na hindi namin hindi na hindi nagtatanggap na donation. Kasi it's in the blood. Kasi if you give it to somebody, eh, magdadevelop din sa hepatitis B and C. Di, wala rin. Mm-mm. So, um, Doctor, once you have this hepatitis po ba, then you're curing and uh, you're, kung ba, may mga immunization shots, ano po ba yung mga allowed na food at sa hindi allowed? Pawal po ba sila sa oily foods? Ay, wala dyan. It's just the infected food. Mm. Kaya na yung oily foods naman, sa puso, sa brain yan. Yes po. Pero yung eh, fatty liver naman yung isa. Pero this is hepatitis A. Walang pakialam ang pagkain. No, with the pagkain itself, ha, sa mm-hmm. hepa, usually it's because of uninfected food pa rin yun. Kaya, mm-hmm. pas, anong kainin ba sa malinis? Mm-hmm. Pero siyempre, hindi maganda yung mga oily, mga salty, masyadong sweets sa iyong general na pangkalusugan ng isang tao. Healthy diet, kung yes, bagay yung sinabi yes. niyo po. Ayan, thank you for sharing your time and knowledge with us, Dr. Vistel. Today, this afternoon po talaga napaka-productive, napaka-informative po yung natutunan. And I hope na yung mga viewers natin out there uh, learned a lot with the hepatitis A and its causes. And of course, thank you to our viewers for sa pagko-comments and sa pagko-questions ninyo. We hope that Dr. Vis- Dr. Vistal here uh, made a, a huge help sa inyong buhay. And watch out for our next episode on February 21. That will be on Tuesday to know more about various health issues that affect our daily living in this city. Again, thank you so much, Dr. Vistal. Again, I am Hannah Lepitan and this has been Manila Med Helpline. Only our best to make you feel better. Good afternoon.